Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and it goes until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. That's about two hours from right now. But uh, we uh, will have our citizens panel about 25 minutes from right now, but we got somebody to talk to, and we have to do it in kind of a special way here. Ah, uh, you know the routine, right? It's the same all the time whenever we call a friend of ours. Let me see here. We've got to call him, though, because what happens is when he answers, he always says something fun. Okay, start ringing. Start ringing. Here we go. I hope he's there today. One is a toddling and one is a crawling and... One's on the way, yes, the country sounds of Dottie Tammy. And if you like Dottie Tammy, you'll like Porter Haggard. I wooed her and loved her and boinked her on the bar. Oh, sorry, I'm in a country mood today. Yahoo. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Yeehaw! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They kill Screen Bean, they kill Screen Bean. <laughs> what up? Yeah, what up? I'm nothing. It's raining here in New York City. What's it doing out Coming in the down. San, What's it doing out in the San Francisco it's, Bay Area? It's it's raining cats and Weinbergs and Mandelbaums. They're just sitting here waiting for you to call. No, so here we are talking to you. No, is it, it is it raining where you are too? No, no, it's uh, it's a little cloudy, and uh, they said it would rain this morning, but it didn't. Well, that's so, the uh, av- that's average that's average San Francisco weather. The same thing. Bobby Slade used to have a bit about the San Francisco weather. So he's foggy in the morning, sunny in the afternoon, foggy at night. Don't you know that by now, you idiot? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that true. An old Slade bit that I always remember. It's true, though. I really, you know, the one thing I, I'm very romantic about San Francisco for is the fog. You know? This is oh, something, I love the fog. I, I love the fog. The fog uh, people don't, I don't know. I, when I try to explain it to people, there's a feeling about the fog. That it just it just permeates you. I mean, I went away from San Francisco for I don't know ten years or something when I went to New York years ago the first time, and then when I came home, the one thing I noticed was just there was a, that fog, and there's a certain dampness in the air in the Bay Area that you don't get in New York City, right? And yeah. I just I just yeah. love the weather in San Francisco. And people go, how can you love that? It's foggy. I said, There's nothing more romantic than walking down a street at night with fog, and a, and a woman with you. I mean, that's just romantic. Yeah, it's, a, it's a nice, clean Bay Area fog. I like it. I always like it. Seeing a little fog on the mountains and stuff at sunset. It's it's pretty. I like it. It's better than New York, where there's like can openers and shit floating in the air. Oh, it's humid again. Humidity seven thousand percent today. Now you you uh, um, you were originally from uh, the New York area, right? Yeah, Hewlett, Long Island, born in Far Rockaway, raised in New York. Yeah, and, and many when, many days in the city. When was the last time you were back in New York? Uh, when did Robin do his play? It was it 2011? I think that yeah. was the last time I was there. Oh my God, it was like seven years ago. Uh, yeah, it has it has so. it has changed so much for the worse. They say the same thing about San Francisco. But it, it's oh, rent wise, and we had rent wise is insane, and we may have to move. So we're kind of panicking here. So, but, well, uh, wait a minute, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not even in San Francisco. No, well, we're in Concord. <laughs> we, we can't even. I'm not even allowed to drive in San Francisco. It's so expensive now. It's insane. I mean, it's how horrible. how expensive has it gotten? Oh, well, I, I, well, they tell me like a studio apartment in the city is like three thousand or something like that. It's pretty oh, bad. Jeez, almighty! A place, a place I used to pay two hundred for back then, back when four Beatles roamed the earth, is now like three thousand. Oh, okay, it's insane. Just take a look at the rents in San Francisco. If you go on some rent thing, you'll, you'll freak out. It's horrible. Well, I mean, it's it's hor- it's, 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 it's horrible. We have to move to Fremont. Well, it's horrible in New York too. But I hear the rents are cheaper in New York than they are in San Francisco yep. now. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. You know, you get a slight more bargain in New York. Not that I want to live there, but, uh, you know, that's what they tell me. 
And then there's Bubbles with his rent control. <laughs> I've been in this six bedroom apartment since 1959, and the rent is seventeen dollars. <laughs> you stay there, Bubbles. Listen. You let them find your cold rotting body there, and, and just you stay in that apartment. So Actually, you got a garage I, space with it too. So. I think he has a studio, if I'm not mistaken. A, yeah, I know he has a garage for his car. His guy. Yeah, but he has to, he has, he has to pay extra for that. I think he's paying more for the garage than he is for the apartment. <laughs> you know, uh, he's been there since like the 70s or something. So, uh, woo, you know, uh, well, why, well, why I, did I leave I, half the apartments I lived in here? Well, you remember my apartment in the marina. Uh, really? I, I had I like two, well, I had two of them. I had two of them. One I used as an office wow. and the other one I used as to live in. Because I got to well, using the other one so much as an office, I said, I want another one. So across a, a fire escape, basically, you know, a, a, uh-huh. one of these metal stairs that go up the side of buildings, uh, on the, you just walk across the, the, the transom there, and there was the other apartment. You wound up in the kitchen of uh-huh. the other wow. apartment. Uh-huh. And I rented both apartments, and I'm trying to remember now, but somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,000. Oh my God, that's for both of them. Holy shit! That I was, one. Yeah, that's probably like ten thousand now. Each mm, apa- each apartment boy. is probably, I would imagine, four thousand dollars at least. Yeah, at least. At least. At least. Oh, in the marina, probably more. Really? I'm no expert, but my God, I know, I know, I couldn't live there. I couldn't even afford to walk by the place and wave. And the marina, folks, is just landfill. That's all it is. You know, the next earthquake that happens, we could all be underwater again. You know, <laughs> there's no more marina. So yeah, well, there you go. So we, well, we have buy the, some beachfront property in Salt Lake City. We had the great Loma Prieta quake. That was what in '89 or was it '89? Yeah. Oh. And, yeah, 89. I was in L.A. that yeah. much, boy. And, Ooh, was scary. and uh, I, uh, you know, I mean, I was out of my apartment for about three days, four days. A par- yeah. uh, whole ho- whole, right. whole apartment houses collapsed in my neighborhood, you know, because yeah. it was all built on on um, water that had been, you know, filled in with the debris. Get this, the yeah. debris oh, from man. the 1906 earthquake. Okay, yep. and then when oh, they filled it right. in with that debris, and then they had the uh, 1916 Pan American Exposition, and so they built all these huge buildings. And the one thing that's left is the Palace of Fine Arts, uh, yeah. uh, which, by the way, was one of the smallest structures in the exhibition. And uh, uh, but wow. it it remained, uh, and then it was like all those things were built with like plaster and chicken wire, you know. Uh, uh, in other words, they were they were only meant to last a year, and then the whole exposition uh, was going to be over with. And they did away at the end of it. They did away with all of them, but they kept that Palace of Fine Arts. And in about nineteen the early nineteen fifties, they took that and took off the plaster and put on concrete and just rebuilt the whole thing because Uh, and people know what we're talking about it it kind of looks like a dome something it looks like it could be a temple but it really if you ask anybody what it is nobody can really tell you it was just this structure (laughs) they built Something that's there. Something that Janis Joplin posed in front of many years ago. As a matter of fact, they have all these statues of, like, naked women uh, adorning Uh, adorning the top of it on all the different sides and stuff. But do you think they're facing out? No, they're facing in (laughs) like they're throwing up into the place. You know, it it is is singularly the, the, the best piece of kitsch I've ever seen in my life. You know, uh, it is just terrible it's art. It's very lovely. It's terrible art. So, oh, you know what? Yeah, I think it looks kind of pretty. I like it. Well, I yeah, like but, it but, 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 but when you ask people, what is it, they can't tell you. You just oh, don't nobody know. Knows. <laughs> nobody knows what it is. I, I think it's kind of a pretty building. I don't know. You know, say, so, well, what happens there? Yeah. I don't know. People go there and then they leave. Yeah, you know, that's what happens there. Swan, swan I swim. I fine arts there. Swan swim around it, and then they have these halls uh, on the outside of it that they hold things in, like I used to hold my uh, my New Year's Eve uh, concerts there, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, they have shows there but, New Year's or whatever. And, but, and, uh, and, and what was, yeah. was nice, I only had to walk one block to go to work and then one block to walk back home, you know. Nothing wrong with that, yeah. Yeah. And well, it, it looks prettier than the Unisphere, <laughs> yeah. the World's Fairgrounds, which is still standing but, with this but, rotting but, from the inside. All of that was on this landfill. So when the earthquake happened in 1989, 
the earth shook so much that the earth liquefied, right? And right. and a yeah. lot of a lot of buildings, a couple of buildings actually fell down. Others were like leaning, and somehow they managed to get them to unlean eventually and, and get up straight yeah. again. But uh, that was that was really something. That was really something. Yeah, I was I was in L.A., but man, I was I had friends who were uh, I think Kravitz and some people, our friend Steve Kravitz, some people were at a, uh, a ball game and the stadium started like waving. It was just getting all wavy in the stadium. And people, were like, oh, I guess this is it. But luckily, we didn't lose anyone. Well, you want to hear the, that was really scary. You want to hear the worst part about the earthquake? So I yeah. had just lost my job at Live One Hundred and Five. They had let me go for some odd reason, and. Uh, to this day, I, we, it's hard to kind of figure out why, but I was out of there. And so I wasn't working, and I was looking for work. And all of a sudden, this earthquake yeah. hits, and you know immediately Lord. that you're not going to be able to find work at all because nobody's doing any hiring or anything oh, until God, everything's uh, be on hold. <laughs> until the city gets somewhat rebuilt. So that's when I went, I got offered a job in Florida, and I went to Florida, and it was lucky that I went to Florida because it was during the period of time that I was in Florida that they did all the work on my building, and they said they would have had, ah, to, okay. they, they would have had to move me to the fourth floor because there was going to be so much noise in the basement that I'd probably go crazy. So I just let somebody yeah. stay there, went to, went to Florida, uh, hated it. After three months, I was out of that job in Florida, and I was back, and then the station uh, rehired me. But, man, the worst uh, time to be out of work is during an earthquake, you know? Oh, yeah. Horrendous, man. Oh, my God. Ooh, when it rains, it pours, Daddy. So oh, yeah. What do you do? When it rains, it pours. Well, you know, as as one person When it who, shakes, it breaks. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been working it all lately? No, but I'm at the punchline on May 24th with some old friends, including Larry Bubbles Brown and our friend Mike Meehan, and oh, it's going to be fun. Uh, and what, t so, what t uh, is it a weekend? No. No, it's just they don't use us old guys. I mean, that's for the young people born in the 90s. That's for millennials. We're just doing one night on Thursday, May 24th, and uh, <laughs> do like two of these a year if we're lucky. What kind and of, what, the rest of the time, I'm a drawbridge oiler for the state. What, what kind of acts do they book in on the weekends now? Who are some of the people they book in? The people I've never heard of, but if you want, I'm at the computer, and we can go. To the punchline, and I'll read this. Now, mind you, uh, could you could you could you say that in those days I was considered kind of the king of comedy? You know that I I we, knew I was the expert. You were the you were the Alan Freed of the whole joint. You made stars, and you know, yeah, you yeah. Show, it was incredible. We owned the city. So and you were I like knew the, you were like the whole Godfather. You're I a radio knew, guy. I knew every comic, even if they didn't do my show. I knew every comic. I yeah. knew I knew the oh, whole sure, scene. Sure. I knew what was out there. I still know what was out there, you know, but it was out uh, there. Now you're going to say some names of people who are playing at the punchline. I'm going to see how many of them I actually know who the fuck they are. <laughs> now, and these, well, see, and these, wait a minute, these are weekend, wait a minute, wait a minute. These are weekend headliners, okay? So that means yeah. they, have to, they have to be able to grab an audience, right? And they're the headliners, yeah. right? Okay, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, May 17th, May 18th. This, is, this would be like Wednesday, I guess Wednesday's through Saturday, whenever they yeah, do it. Yeah, Wednesday, right. yeah, Wednesday. Here's a gentleman, Tony Hinchcliffe, who looks like he's in his 20s. Here's, now, wait a minute. Oh, wait here's our thing, one night only. Okay, Mike Lee and Stephen Pro trying to steal Larry Bubbles. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. What's going on without the crown, I'll tell her. So that's the whole show with you guys that you're mentioning. That's the show with us on May 24th. Good. Yeah. There it is. Uh, yeah. Then there's the next weekend big show is Jimmy O. Yang, <laughs> Asian gentleman. <laughs> Who the and, fuck are these oh, people? Sure, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, there's more. Let's see. Oh, I, I'll, I'll make weekend. you a bet. Some of the old I'll time. make you a bet that as, as, uh, as, as old as I am, and maybe I'm out of the loop, if I got a 30-year-old in here, they wouldn't know who these guys were either. It would probably be too old. Here's Jenny Zagrino. God, that was, they look really young. Now, this is a... This is a wait a minute. Is that a weekend headliner? That is a weekend headliner. That is... What did I say? You, Jenny's Zagrino. It's so bad. It's so bad, folks. Get this, if you can, that our dear friend here... Stephen Pearl can't even pronounce their names. 
Uh, here's one, Josh Blue. I can pronounce that one. Yeah. Picture of a fellow with a chicken on his head. Wow, that's wacky. Here's Phil and Lee. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I don't know who any. Josh Blue. Blue. God bless I, every I, one of them. I never heard of Josh Blue in my life. I, you know. Well, where you been? <laughs> where you been, Daddy? He's all the rage. <laughs> are any of these? Are any of these local comics? No, I would say most of them come in from L.A. They hardly use local people here at there at all. It's Bobby Lee. Well, he's he's an older guy in his 40s. Bobby but, Lee, I seem to like vaguely him. remember what? What's another name? There, you're going to meet. No, I'm just looking at Dave, uh, Nick Yusuf. Did I mention him? Oh, here, Melissa Villasenor. Oh, Villasenor. Well, she... I can't even spell I, this one. Uh, bingo, I know her. She, you know, okay, yeah. Villa Center, Senor, Senor, Villa Senor, Senor. Really she is one end. of the not ready for primetime players on Saturday Night Live. Okay, well then they got a, I don't know, these people, the Dan Soder. But I think uh, to this day the, she's not like one of the, the you know how they have a, a group of people who are the not ready for primetime players, with, and then they have all those names. She's been a with for years now. Oh, yeah, okay, here's Chad Daniels. I'm just reading your names because Scott got I don't know who Scott Caporo? Is, yeah. is Scott? Oh, he's he's an older guy. He's he maybe one of us. Yes, he is. He was he, he was the oh, gay okay. the gay comic. The gay okay, there he is. The gay, it doesn't say it. it just says Scott Scott Capuro. So now, there is he, he is. headlining and or uh, is he headlining? He's headlining. There's a, there's a big picture of him here going, "Hey, I'm Scott Capuro." Is that is that on uh, the week? And is that on the weekend? That is on the uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you the reason why they're probably booking him is because he is gay, and there are so few probably gay comics that you just named that he has a nice draw in San Francisco. Oh, okay. Well, good for him. No, good for Uh, him. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy, and uh, I'm glad to see him. He's a nice guy. I'm all all for all of these people if they're good people. They're just... It's a young person's game. They don't want too many old faces. So what are you going to do? So, well, you know, we're well, lucky to get to make well, 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 you know, I'll just be working at the library, at the prison S- library. Scott's an old face. You know, I was hiring him back in the day for my shows. Yeah, he looks, like, he looks like he's around uh, of our. He was, looks like he remembers the eighties. He was in. So, um, uh, he was in uh, what do you call it? The Phantom Menace. The 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 the, the, the uh, Star Wars when they did the comeback of the Star Wars. Uh, and he was one of the uh-huh. announcers in the race scene along with Greg Proops. So that's the oh, last okay. time I heard of that's Scott Capurro. Uh, there you go. There we go. I don't know. I'm so out of the loop. I have no fucking idea who these people are. See? See? Uh, I don't know what they do. I don't know what they live on. I don't know where, where they're going. I mean, there's not, but, there's, uh, not even a, there's not even a real name in that bunch. I mean, that, that, uh, that you know, I mean, I don't understand. I don't know who the... I don't know who the stars are. I know Amy Schumer's a star, and who well, I don't know. I don't know what's going. On. I'm so out of the loop, and I'm so uninterested in it too. I just I like the older people. Amy know, Schumer's a star. People. I think she's a good uh, she's a good sketch comic. I don't think she's a very good stand up. You know, no, I, I, I think she's where she too, should so be. Uh, she's where she should be making movies. You know, but yeah. um, you know, I mean, even even when you talk about. The older women, I mean, some of them are not really getting hired anymore. I mean, Sarah Silverman, is she headlining lately? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, what she, she, I mean, she's, she's working, you know. She, she ain't wondering how the light bill's getting paid. But uh, it's it's a young person's game. And now these people who are born in the night, these people hear about Sam Kennison like I heard about James Dean. It's, well, you know what? I, on Netflix, on Netflix they, what they did is they decided they would take over the comedy franchise from hbo oh yeah so they just bought up everybody <laughs> and i mean there are a few people i know of course uh because they're they're old line great comics but most of the yeah. newer ones i never heard of in my life and yet they've got a special yeah. on uh a rock in, yeah a yeah. rock in my backyard just got a netflix special yeah Bradley. exactly you know i mean and, they, <laughs> and, and and i don't watch them because quite frankly uh the ones that i have seen that i didn't know who they were i I really wasn't getting what they were trying to do, you know. Yeah, I don't get this new humor. There's no beginning I mean, you or middle you or end. I don't get what these kids are doing today. You don't even see Lewis Black getting hired that much anymore, you know. I haven't heard he of was, him in a while. Yeah, yeah I mean, he was, he, was around ta- working, but, uh, he was around town. He was around town more than a cheap suit at one point. He, uh, you know, late, yeah. late, lately it's kind of quiet. I know, but, uh, 
You know, so I don't know who's going to see comedy or why they're going to see comedy or if they enjoy seeing comedy, you know? I know. I don't even know what comedy is anymore, so I just want to I'll stick with the old timers like Pryor and Carlin and Robin and Rich Seidner and Bruce Bauman, Benny Johnson and all our friends from the day. We, we, well, you know, know where some of them have wound up? There's this show on uh, on Showtime called I'm Dying Up Here. Which is about the comedy. Oh, I, I watched the first episode. I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually it's yeah. very good. It's very good. It, yeah, it, it's okay. it, well, I you know, as someone who was around kind of at that time, this takes place in like seventy four, seventy five, and it's supposed to be the comedy yeah, yeah. store. And I was kind of around at that point doing the you know the skits and sketches uh -huh. on radio mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And I I find as I watch it that it's very authentic, you know, uh, and it's, what? It's but well, I saw the first episodes of each season. That's all I care about. But I saw I saw more real drama at the comedy store than a thousand of those shows. Well, but, of course, <laughs> yeah. But, 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 I, I lived it, so I got need to watch them. But make still, believe, but, you know, it, there are friends of mine in the show, and I'm very happy for them. You know, it it was. It, I mean, they. Portray, they portray the woman who does her version of Mitzi Shore. Yeah, uh, is is kind of like Mitzi Goldie. Shore was, you know. Yeah, uh, this is yeah, uh, a woman who you know believe, believe, definitely have ideas. You know. Believe it or not, in all of that, I never met Mitzi Shore. Never met Mitzi. I liked her. I you know I, I didn't get involved in the politics of the this, place. But let me tell people, and, this is uh, the woman who ran the comedy store. Okay, yeah. Yeah, she built it, she invented it, she uh, turned it. It was a once mighty, mighty empire. It's still open 46 years later, and it yeah. may not be what it was, but that's saying something that the place is still there. You know? Yeah. New generations yeah. are going there. But uh, back in the day, you go there, Jack Nicholson's hanging out, Robert De Niro's hanging out, Johnny Carson's going on stage. And my God, any name you can think of was playing there. It was, it was the Fillmore East of comedy. Yes. Yeah. You know, God bless it. And, and then she passed away April 11th, so. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but you liked her. I liked her. She took me in as a paid regular, and I never really, I never had any problems there. And I was there from about 1980, the end of 1986 to about 2004, 2005, and the place kind of played itself out for me. And then I didn't go there anymore. But uh, you know, I did. I, uh, you know, I had some fun there. I had yeah. some not so fun times there. I saw a lot of drama there. But, I saw a lot. Yeah. I met the world there. She had me follow Richard Pryor three times in a row my first week there. So it was the real school, man. You know. But what they're doing on that show, a couple of the actors in the show are actually have been comics, and and they yeah. and, and so they uh, it, it it becomes much more authentic that way. And you see a few old faces yeah. like our friend Dom Marrera, who I think is one of the funniest. Dom Marrera, Rick Overton, a friend of mine, Eric yeah. Griffin is in it. Yeah. Like one of the comics. He's one of the main guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Dana, I, not Dana Carvey, Dana Gould, I think did a part as an agent on it. On one of the episodes. Yeah. I only saw two of the episodes, but uh, yeah. But it, you know, it it, well. it 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 has a real authentic feel to it. So I kind of I kind of like yeah. it. But uh, you know, that's when that was then, and this is now. And, um, yep. you know, I, 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 has comedy changed or do they just, young people want to see young people doing comedy? It's both. It's changed and they want, it's just, a, you know, new styles will, uh, you know, come yeah. with each generation, like with music or, you know, anything else. But uh, I don't get a lot of it because I'm just used to the kick-ass funny people, you know, that we grew up with not up here in the Bay Area. And the Boston guys and Kennison, and early Kennison, and just you know everybody. I can you know who wrote something? Right now. You know who wrote something on my Facebook page the other day, and I wrote him back, but then he never wrote back, which is typical of him. Is uh, Jeremy Kramer? Uh, oh yeah, I saw that little thing. He wanted to get in touch with you or something, and then uh, he went back into his coma. I don't know. What yeah, he, he went back into his coma. Exactly. <laughs> back yeah. in, in back case, into the cave. The in Kramer, case people, I, cave. I think you will agree with me. In case people out there don't know who Jeremy Kramer is. Maybe one of the funniest people in America. Oh, without it, it's always cracked me up. He always cracked me he up. He was. He, off his, his pro, he was what was called, and you don't want to be called this ever, the comedian's comedian. <laughs> because, I, I've been called be, that. I hate it. Because that beca well, be, he's not working. It becomes a curse. You know, it is a curse. Because <laughs> so, be much, so much is expected out of you. And uh, 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 the question is, are you capable of delivering on that? on that accolade and either that or you sit around and think that 
it, you know you're good, and everybody's told you how good you are, but you don't know how to go out and push yourself. You feel exactly. it's going to come to exactly. you because you're so good, it's going to come to you, and it, it's, it's just oh, not that way. Oh, I can relate to that. <laughs> I can relate to you're that You're one of the funniest people I know. Hungry. You should be working, you know, five nights a week somewhere. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, easy, bubbles, easy. come on. Are you kidding? Bubbles? Oh, come on. That's Bubbles a, that's works. A, he works a bit, you know. He, he works, he, yeah. Uh, but, you know, and I always talk about Durst. He works because when he gets up in the morning and sees a blank space on the calendar, he's got to fill it. Exactly. He's a major, major hustler. I wish yeah. I had that one billionth of that gift. He yeah. Has. He gets yeah. it done, man. Uh, and, and he's always got new shit. You know, he's political. Uh, he's always he's working the every act. Day and he's great at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, listen, yeah, I, 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 looked, I looked at the clock, and guess what it says? Stephen Pearl's Stephen Pearl's time. Stephen Pearl's time is up. <laughs> and I don't. I, <laughs> oh boy! I don't think it's going to say that for real. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Steve. Let's do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? Anytime, my friend. I'm always available for you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Stephen Pearl. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. And here we are. Uh, yeah, I turned on that light just just seconds ago. Uh, I always forget something these days, and I didn't want to forget that because my wife would let me never hear the end of it. She Where's the light? You want to see the? I bought you that light, that on the air sign. You got to use that. Yeah, so that makes it official that we're on the air. Of course, when I'm not on the air, you know, I actually turn the damn thing off. Is that silly or what? Yes, it is or what? Let me see here. Let me uh, open up the uh, Skype lines here. Uh, I got to clear out all the the noise from yesteryear here on the page. Clean that up. And then I t put myself online so that other people can call me if they want to call me. Uh, and you can do that by using Skype. If you don't know how to do that, uh, simply um, simply go to the, uh, the um, uh, gabnet.net page, okay? And at gabnet.net, you will find me and a lot of other shows and things like that. But over on the right-hand side of the, of the page uh, is all the information you need to know about using Skype and getting Skype and how you call us. And there's even a button there that you can, you can click on that if you've got Skype open, it'll automatically call us, okay? So it's all very easy. So do that before, you, uh, like what they used to say, do that now so you don't forget, right? Okay. Anyway, um, there are a lot of things to talk about. You know, I got to tell you, my wife got this uh, these eye drops, okay, Restacia or something like that. I don't know what's called. And um, she uses it, but then there's a, there's a whole bunch of it left in the thing, and so she has me using it. And my pro what is the? There we go. There we go. We finally got we got them on. Uh, anyway, I, uh, I I use the thing, and she comes in with it and goes here. Use it, and she won't leave the room till I use it. So I used it just before I went on the air here, and now my eyes are burning from this uh, from this stuff. So, so much for helping my eyes. Hello there, Phil Meyer. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, let me turn you up a little bit here. So there's a little bit more person there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let, let's see your hand now. There, okay. See, uh, yeah. oh, you, you have some. You have something you want to say? No, absolutely not. Oh, really? Nothing yeah. at all. There's nothing that uh, that uh, is uh, is is in your craw. Well, let's see. You you talked about comedy, uh, and I agree with you. There are few comedians now that I recognize, and. Um, you know, you introduced me to the comedy scene in San Francisco. Uh, you, you were the kingmaker. Uh, I went to the Throckmorton last Tuesday, and uh, I saw Mike Meehan, who was the um, MC. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, uh, 
your friend, uh, what, the, what the hell's his name? Bob Rubin. Bob Rubin, yeah. Yeah. All right. and uh, That's the reason he's not a big success. You can't remember his name. No, that's not <laughs> his fault. That's, that's not his fault. I can't remember anybody's yeah. name. Yeah. yeah. Mike Meehan's still working, huh? Yeah, and he was good. Yeah, Mike Meehan was a very good comic, uh, but he never he never became successful at it, particularly, and I wonder if he has a day job. Uh, I would imagine he does. A lot of these guys do now, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's not so much they give up on comedy, but comedy gives up on them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very competitive field. And, uh, you know, I mean, the people that rise to the top are not necessarily the best. But they're the ones that got an agent interested in them or they had something about them that an agent saw promotable or whatever. It's all, all the difference in the world is an agent. Yeah, well, know. they got on a sh uh, they got on a show. Uh, they you know they became a character on a show. Uh, you know, there's uh, your friend Rick Overton, uh, your other friend Patton Oswald. They, yeah. These guys are working. I uh, I was watching a show called AP AP something or other, and Patton Oswald was playing the um, oh yeah yeah, yeah bio yeah 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 he was playing the uh, principal yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, I mean, I know. Uh, yeah, no, he gets work all the time. I mean, he was on uh, who was it? Was it Everybody Loves Raymond or something? No, the 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 other show. Uh, no, he was on the a fat show. Guy. Where no, he, a he, he, no, but he was on a show where uh, what was it? The, 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 Everybody Loves Raymond had a spinoff with the fat actor. Uh, I can't remember his name, and he was on that show. Uh, he was in another show. I it was uh, like a cable one where yeah. uh, he was playing a cop. Uh, was it on Breaking? Not Breaking Bad. No, Pat, Patton's been very, uh, very successful. I'd love to have him on the show, but I don't know how to get a hold of him. So you know, it's. Oh, uh, why don't you ask one of your friends who does no, know how no, to get a hold? Well, of him? I, 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 I did ask one of them, and he was going to do me the favor of getting a hold of Patton, and I don't think he ever did. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you know, I'm sure Patton would do the show. It, I, it doesn't matter. I don't care whether I have guests or not. I'm happy with the ones I have. You know, yeah. you know, I mean, it, it, it for all the work I have to put in to get somebody who's uh, got a name now who will do the show for all the work it takes to do that. I could just be doing something else. You know, could what I'm be saying? at the gym. I could be at the gym. Exactly. <laughs> well, I didn't go to the gym today. No. Why? You're uh, uh, 86? Or what's no, the story? no, 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 no. I had lunch with my Using friend Jack. Towel? I had my uh, lunch with my friend Jack Garfine today. Oh, so, okay. Uh, that, you know, uh, they'll 86 you if you don't wipe the equipment. Yeah, I, I do. I wipe it all the time. As a matter of fact, they have these little moist towelettes all over the place, and you grab one and you go and you wipe your uh, your, your uh, thing down. Your, your seat, I don't mean your thing. Your your, your Bicycle Sorry, I, or whatever. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jeff. But hello, guys. You know, I mean, I and I, 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 I drew, get a certain amount of sweat going. You know. Yeah. So. And and it's just the uh, bicycle. You, you the use, light right? in back of you is causing the light and your light to uh, go down. Uh, there you go. If you go to the side, what is wrong? Right, with, yeah. Do you have a Do you have a tissue in your nose? Yeah, yeah. I had a, a little bit of a bloody nose today. A little bit What's of the blending. I look, huh? What the other guy look like? Well, the guy was uh, too many aspirins. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> too many aspirins. Well, it thin your blood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, no. So you know, like for instance, I did Pen Gillette, and Pen was happy to do it, but it took forever to get him at a yeah. time when I could get him, and uh, I had to go through his uh, his management in order to get him because they had to arrange. Uh, it's, it's you know. But I mean, then he did it. He was true to his word. But uh, you know, that was a good show. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. So, and Greg Proops used to do my show often. But then one week he said to me, he said, "Well, I can't do it this week. I'll call you next week." And I never heard from him. So then, about a year later, I said, "Hey, you want to do the show?" He says, "Yeah, I think I can do it like next month sometime. Get a hold of me then." And I just yeah. gave up. I just, you know, I, I you know. I, I, and I didn't need all that work to go through all that work for people who should just say, hey, when do you want me to call? You know, well, uh, I have a nephew that gave up a brilliant business career 
Uh, he's a graduate of uh, what's that? College, University of Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, and he decided that he was going to tour with a rock group called the Wigs. Wait a minute, hold on a second. You got to do something about that light in the back, uh, uh, Jeff. Je Jeff, because it, it it the light in the back is is. It, can you somehow do you have a light in the front of you that you can turn on? And you can turn that one off. Yeah, is that yeah, one better? yeah, that's yeah, better. Probably. Sure. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, you're, yeah, you're, that yeah, you're a little more. It's more moody now, but you're not. It's not like you're, you know, Pop yeah, in and out. yeah, popping in and out. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. guys. Yeah, that's so, okay. So my nephew gives up this career and decides to become a comedian, and he's opening for a group called the Wigs. And when they're uh, touring all over the United States, he's also selling the uh, T-shirts and. And, and and so forth but he he's found a uh, couple of rooms in in the south where he performs and his whole act is that he doesn't curse uh, and uh, he doesn't use cheap shots uh, but therefore he's not that popular you know well I don't know you know I mean uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld yeah was always work clean yeah. Even when he first started, I always worked clean, and he was still one of the funniest comedians around. So you can be funny without being dirty. And it's funny yeah. that he then did the TV show, which became one of the filthiest shows on television. I'm trying to think of the guy that took him under his arm. He, he was uh, uh, this uh, southern uh, cigarette-smoking uh, uh, comedian. Uh, it'll it'll come to me. It took who under his wing? Uh, my nephew. Oh, I know. It's a cig so, cigarette you know, he's, smoking. Uh, he's, yeah, he works at this guy's club in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, I have and, no idea. Never. Uh, it'll idea. come to me. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, I'll look it up on uh, yeah. look him up on Facebook. Well, that's all old stuff from when I used to be a big shot, you know. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, uh, I'm, I'm amazed that I don't hear from more of those people, you know, because I did, you know, I did really help them with their career. I mean, and... Well, and and they helped me with mine. I mean, they helped me by being on the show, and I appreciate it. But uh, a lot of them basically got their start with me. And uh, do I hear from them now? No. Yeah. Now, one day they'll read my obituary and say, oh, Alex Bennett died? You know, yeah. one of those things. Yeah. Yes, uh, Jeff. I, I think that's a very typical thing that happens to people who have uh, careers, so to speak, and then... Yeah, in their retired careers. Well, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't resent it. You know, I just figure that, it, you know, what happens when one of them, and I'll give you a good example, when one of them does come around and say, "I wanted to just see how you're doing," you mm -hmm. know, uh, I'm more surprised with that than I am that they don't, the other ones don't call. And I'll tell you, I had one guy, uh, Bob Schimmel, before he died. When I, I was out of work at one point, I, I couldn't do him any good. And he kept calling me saying, how you doing? Hey, I'm coming to San Francisco. You want to have lunch, you know? And I always appreciated that. Uh, and the other guy who did nice by me was Patton Oswald, who was playing at, uh, I can't remember where in San Francisco, like the film or something. He was doing a special for HBO. And he called me up before he did the special. And he said, I, I found you, I got your number from somebody, and I, I just wanted to call and thank you because I wouldn't be doing a special like this if it wasn't for you. Thank you for giving me a career. So, you know, I mean, there are people who unexpectedly do things like that, and you, you really appreciate them for it. But when they don't, you, don't, you can't allow yourself to get disappointed. That's par for the course. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, one of the things that maybe I should have done when I... Uh somewhat retired what was thank was, it was thank me for your comedy career <laughs> well it wasn't for that but i, <laughs> I could have i could have sent an email to i don't know whatever a couple hundred people and said you know hey thank you uh that i'm, I'm retiring from uh the name of the company and and that uh i i appreciate all the effort and, and help that you gave me over the years and if there's anything i could do give me a buzz yeah yeah, and if, if but I didn't do that. You may remember me as the guy with the napkin in his nose. <laughs> That's right. Hey, you ever see uh, uh, people close a store, or like a retail store, and you'll see a sign on it: "Thank you for thirty years of business. Twenty-five of them were profitable." 
<laughs> uh, no, I didn't see that. I saw that but I saw part. one. I saw one very sad one where my wife and I had our first lunch together down in the village, uh, yeah. and we passed by it the other day, and it said, uh, "Thank you very much for your thirty years of patronage. We're out of business, and you know, and that place will probably stay empty." Uh, really? Oh, sure. The reason why I'm sure they they decided to go out of business was the rent got too high. It's happening all over this town, and well, yet, I've, I've and yet, that. once once those places are empty, they stay empty for a year because they want too much for the rent, and they won't come down, huh? and, and they won't come down. You know, I and the stupidity of it is, they'd be better off leaving those people in there with a slight raise than to have that thing sit there with nobody in it for a year or two. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, you get somebody if they moved in thirty years ago, yeah, and their their rent was considerably less than uh, than what it is today, uh, you know, and and what the market what the market is today. Yeah, well, not like you have a business, you have a storefront, right? Uh, how does the rent do in there? Uh, since rents in the I, Bay Area have been going up a lot, I pay nine thousand a month for and, about six thousand square feet, and how and I, uh, great uh, deal. How, and how long have you been paying that? that uh, I've been in that spot 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it started out around 6000 something. Well, then that's reasonable. And uh, I moved from a place that was half the size. It was a little better location. Uh, and I was still, and I was paying 6000 Yeah. Uh, 15 years ago. And I was there 12 years. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you know, that's that's good. Hello, Patrick. Hola. Hola, how are you? Tip top. Tip top, top of the tip? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Top, top of the tip, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I was, um, God, I, I really, you know, I, I, was, I was doing my uh, breaking news thing, uh, which I'm trying to figure out, uh, not breaking news, but news break. Yeah, I saw I saw that today. Uh, just now, I, I think there was 27 views. Four people gave you a thumbs up. Nobody gave you a thumbs down. Where did where, you watch it though? There were more uh, people YouTube. elsewhere. On, I, on one of the other places. Oh, YouTube. Yeah, I, there's less on YouTube than I, on Facebook. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, no, they, I get about 150, maybe 200 people a day watching that, uh, which mm -hmm. is you know it's it's perfectly acceptable to me i mean i would love to have thousands but uh you know i'm still looking for a hook with it uh but i it was i thought it was pretty good today actually but the yeah. problem is that the first i think four stories were all about donald trump and you know it's not because i'm sitting there and i want to put donald trump down so i'm 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 picking the Donald Trump stories there were four Donald Trump stories that if I didn't mention them okay in fact I have the paper this oh, it's big news yeah what did you mention the, well here uh, here wait, I got the, it I got it right I got it right I got, I got it right here hold on a second yeah let's see here the first story was uh, Korea and mm -hmm. the fact that he uh, uh, decided that he was not gonna go to the conference uh, That's just it, the, the second story was the uh, Spygate claim and the fact that he was going to let the Gang of Eight see the uh, proof that he has, which turns out he doesn't have any. Uh, and then uh, President uh, Trump uh, not, be, you know, be, not being able to block people on his page. And finally, in an ancillary way, Trump's uh, son-in-law, Jared Kushner, which, by the way, you had the story kind of wrong last night. Uh, he got his. Uh, he he got his. Uh, uh, yeah, but why didn't he have it before? Uh, he didn't turn in. Something. That's correct. And so he finally turned all that in, and they cleared him. Right. Okay. You were making it seem as though he, they cleared him because he spoke in front of uh, Mueller's committee for six hours. And no, I didn't say anything it, about Mueller's you, committee. You, 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 well, yes, Patrick. I have to say. Um, the last thing that I was supposed to hear last night is when Phil said, Patrick said, uh, stand for the anthem. Yeah. Well, right after that, it got really fucking good. And there I am sitting naked on my shower bench, listening to Phil and listening to Renee going <laughs> at each other's throats. And 
I'm not showering. I didn't I didn't take a shower for another <laughs> half hour. It's just talking about the lava hitting the water. Yeah. I knew everything was done and then I went in the shower, but I, I couldn't stop. I'm 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 watching this and Renee going white privilege and, and oh <laughs> man, that was great. That was entertainment that I haven't had in a long time. And, and, so. and that's and that's what it is. I like Renee very much and uh, you know Well I I, I, I have a challenge I for one of the let her get I, away I, with I, I have a challenge for one of the members of tonight's uh, show. Uh, who are here? Who's here already? Because you're so enamored of that national anthem that we have, mm -hmm. oh, Phil. Sing it. Uh, well, I tell you well, what I'm going to do. Come on, Phil. You. No, sing it. Or okay, if you can't I'm, sing, recite it. I can't even recite. Well, it, wait a minute. I, if it's such an important piece of music, why well, can't you speak. recite it? Here, I'll put my hand up. Uh, look, I got a guy that works for me that was on The Voice, and he sings, he's a plumber, and he sings the national anthem like it's never been sung before. And I, uh, I, I what, would on key? have him fall in and sing the national no, no, anthem. No, 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 no. I, no, those no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, Phil. Phil, last yeah. night you were waxing so poetic about the national anthem and that people should stand for it because it's a very important song. And so I figure that someone who believes hey. that should be able to uh, uh, well, not at least at least recite it for me. I have photographed many sports events, in, in, including the should, Oakland this A's should be, uh, and the this, this should be a, a walk in the park for you. Right. When I photograph these things, they have someone that sings it. Oh, wait I can so do it. All the job that uh, the audience has to do is stand up and put their hand over their heart. Wait a minute. Uh, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We have a uh, we have a Ray Renati. Ray Renati is calling in. Hello, Ray. Ray, are you there? And apparently he's got some. Oh, there he is. There's his picture coming up. There we go. Wait a minute. Are you there, Ray? Oh. What the hell is that? There, there. Now you can hear me. <laughs> what is that wig you're wearing? Yeah, we, no, people go I over just, and I watch the video version of it. A little bit. Huh? Is that a scroll wig? It, it's a. It, it's. I got my hair done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well it looks I, re really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it off. <laughs> I can see that you like it. <laughs> Actually, you got some great, great gray hair. You know that. Uh, it, it's too reflective. It's too reflective. <laughs> you know anyway, that, no, wait that, movie, what? that movie Cobra Kai, the one who plays the uh, Cobra Kai. Yeah, it's a remake of the Karate Kid. I binged it the other day on uh, uh, YouTube, and so, but the uh, you've got the uh, the two. How kids do you, who, how do you binge a singular movie? Uh, well, it was ten episodes, not actually. Oh, a movie. really? Oh, yeah. who would want to sit through ten episodes of something like that? Well, it was it was drivel. I mean, all I well, did was sit there and and well, and, so your life must be drivel too, because you know. Yeah. But anyway, let's get back to where we okay, were. Okay, the guy on that oh, looks just Jesus. like Ray. But okay, now let's get back to what we were saying. Obviously, <laughs> you're not going to even recite the Star Spangled Banner because you're incapable of doing it. Well, I'm always behind a camera. When it's oh, being, I uh, see. I see. Now, Ray. Oh, Ray yeah. Uh, Ray, go ahead. Yes. Sing, yes can yes. you sing the Star Spangled Banner? Oh, say. Let's see. No, oh, wait. say. Oh, different. You can't. Oh, say. It's a terrible. Can't it's a ter you see by uh, the dawn's early light for see? the ramparts we watched. Were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets' red glare. Here comes the hard the part. The bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Very 
very good. Very, very good. Thank you very much, Ray. And, but you yeah. forgot you forgot two words in that. What? Play ball. Play ball. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now, uh, now, now. Do you remember the lyrics now, Phil? No. This commie over here named Ray Renati can do it, yeah. but you can't. Well, that's, that's his job. Now, uh, can anybody you sing want, this? You want can, to find out how to install floor covering? Can any? That's can my anybody here? My job is sing the Star Spangled Banner. Wait a minute. <laughs> now, now here comes the difficult part. Can you sing the second verse? No, I forgot it. Uh, Patrick. All right. So. I didn't take my hat off because I rose, I forgot I had it on, but I was holding myself up in the chair. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I do. That's my, that's the only way that I can stand. And I was uh, on Facebook, somebody was yapping about that. And I said, whenever it rarely played on television, which it, it really isn't for any sporting event, mm -hmm. they never really show it, but when it is, I do lift myself in out of a sign of respect. So that that's how I stand for it. I, I don't so. understand the why and excuse me for for uh, being a uh, an asshole here, but I don't understand why we need to stand for a fucking song. Okay? Because the song to begin with the song does not represent something. It does it, 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 there are Many other songs that were considered for the national anthem at the time that we made it such, and I think it was 1936. It's just we never had an anthem, so we figured, let's get one. But why we put this uh, almost godlike status to it that we must, you know, we must put our hand over our heart and we must stand for the national anthem. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, you should be able to jerk off to the national anthem if you want to, you know? I'm <laughs> Yeah. We're following protocol for most other countries. I mean, God save the queen. Uh, you know, you, you go to other... We, we took... I mean, our, our country, when it was founded, we took things from France. We took things from Britain. You know, Germany. You know, they were just... So we inherited things and, and countries that had national anthems or songs. Yeah, but I got to tell you, Go to England, go to France, go to Italy, to go to any of them, and if their team uh, uh, plays the national their national anthem before the game, and I don't know that they do, okay, but if they do, they do. Uh, well, not all the countries do, you know, uh, but uh, the, the fact that they do, uh, if they do, if 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 some player wanted to take the knee or didn't want to sit up or whatever. Uh, there wouldn't be like the National Soccer League would come along and say, hey, we're going to fine him for not standing up for the national anthem. You know? That's what I'm saying. I mean, we just, we put too much into it. It's just a fucking song. It's idolatry is what it is, which is against the Christian religion, I know. And I think it's also against the Jewish religion as well. Thou shalt have no, have no other gods before me. And, how, how else are we going to worship our leader? Without singing him a song. Right, right. By the way, he got his money for his parade today. Did you nice. see that? Who oh, did he? Huh? From well, from uh, from gutter or the well, no? It was it was worked into the uh, was worked into the defense budget. So he's got money for the parade. I couldn't find out how much money for the parade. I hope it's only like a dollar fifty. But uh, you know what what what, what were you what were you you're moving your lips there, uh, Patrick? What a fucking waste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, well, obviously I'm patriotic and all that, but at some point uh, it becomes a fucking waste of money and a, and a parade. There's plenty of parades for Memorial Day, Veterans Day, you know, that 4th of July. Um, we don't need another parade just to have a fucking parade to show what we have for our military. I, it, how, how else are we going to worship our leader? Didn't you say that already? Jerk well, off the national anthem. How else we worship our leader without a parade? Well, you, 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 I guess you can't. Uh, but well, he won a Nobel Prize before he even did anything. Of course, 
Uh, are we going to be like the Philippines where they're going to find you? Well, I said, I'm, I, I said on my little, oh, they, they'll I, shoot you. I, I said on my uh, my uh, news break thing today that uh, I showed a picture again of those coin, that coin that he made, uh, commemorating the uh, the peace hearings in uh, with North Korea, and I said, what are they going to use these for now? Go out to Coney Island, and use them in an arcade? As, I don't you know, think they were paid for by any uh, government money. I think it was a private. Uh, well, they might have because they they cut the price down, so they might have lost money on them. Well, uh, and, and by the way, if you look closely at the picture, and I, I do have it here, but I don't want to. I'm not going to put it up because you guys can't <laughs> see it. it. The picture of Trump does not look like Trump, and the picture of Kim Jong Un looks absolutely nothing like Kim Jong Un. Yeah. It's kind of like I don't care. Is? I don't care what anybody says about the Martin Luther King Memorial. It was created by a Chinese guy, and it looks like a Chinese version of Martin Luther King. Was that heresy well, on my part? Did I say something wrong? I'm sorry. It doesn't look like Martin, no, Dr. Martin Luther King. There, there's, there's breaking news out there. What, 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 wait, what, what? There's breaking news? Yeah, I'm, I'm just reading an article. McDonald's yeah, I know. suing yeah, no. for $5 million dollars. Uh, for unwanted quarter pounder with cheese, yeah, and that it's in Florida. Full what do you mean pounder. an unwanted quarter pounder it with cheese? It says that there were uh, four versions of the quarter pounder, and the ones without cheese were thirty to ninety cents less. And so this guy has started a class action suit uh, for five million dollars uh, to sue McDonald's because of the changes in their menu. Lots of luck getting that money. <laughs> yes, Patrick. Um. That particular coin could be like the other goofy ass coins that they make for all the different presidents with various events where they it is a private organization yeah. that makes them and then they, they sell a colored version. Colorized, and, yeah. And and just gold plated. Well, wait, 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 but that's that's a private company that does these commemorative I, things that they put wait, hold on a second, that they put up uh, on television, but this was actually these coins were this. They came from the White House. They said the White yes, House showed was, them today. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, yeah. they, there was something in the news that the 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 people in the White House that created this coin uh, were a private arm of whatever they were doing. Uh, so, and I think the meeting is going to take place. Uh, I think this is just a matter of posturing on both of their parts. Well, did, China, China's not going to let it take place, Phil. It's not in China's interest. I'll bet money on that. Yeah, yeah, it's in the, China's it's, the one that put the kibosh on the whole deal. Right. But he, it, he had two meetings with the Chinese, and they put an end to it. Because yeah, China's going to break the embargo. They don't want to unite Korea because it's st st strategically not good for them. Mm -hmm. And they're going to prop up. Kim Jong Un, as long as they have to. I don't think there's going to be a united Korea, but I do think that these uh, these discussions. Well, what the China's fuck do you know, Phil? You're wrong. You're wrong. I actually, actually, Tim is Korea. right. The theory that I've heard pos posited uh, very often today on various programs, whether it was uh, Fox or whether it was MSNBC or whatever, is that uh, China doesn't want this uh, thing to take place. You know, well, and that they. You know, they who play, you know who played the card this time? It was Kim Jong Un, who went down and danced with the South Korean president back and forth across the boundary, to the two countries. Yeah. And uh, and and then he he scared the crap out of Chi, who thought, man, this could happen within a year or two. I got to get out of this embargo. Well, what thing. happened was we didn't know until I think almost the last day or two. That there was, you know, we remember that uh, that he went to China, and then he came back, and that's when he started making his peace overtures. Right. Well, right. we found out today that there were actually two meetings. Yeah, there was a, he got called back. And after the second meeting, he started pulling back on the peace uh, accords. Yeah. You, you have to follow the money, Phil, because the, the elite that lives with Kim Jong Un rely on a, a, a supply of laundered money and mm -hmm. black market products coming through China and all the Chinese fishing boats. Yeah. And that's basically who's running North Korea, yeah. is China. Well, it's been that way for many, many decades. But it's in their right. best interest 
to start trading uh, so that not only he but his people no. will end up uh, in a much better it, position. It, it would they're, be in their. It, it would be more in their best interest, his, his best interest, to let China take the tab on helping him out, and I not mean, and, China and, takes and, the tab helping anybody. Yes, they do. It, North Korea is completely dependent on China. They always they have, have been. Energy. They have no call. They have no nothing without, they, without China. That's exactly right. Whatever China tells them to do, they have to do it, or they will cease to exist. We have and the rest. Most of the country is is starving, and the elite has been starving. They can't get their fancy new Xboxes and their new Maseratis like they usually do. So he's got to placate them. Yep, that's totally it's like correct. A frater- it's like a fraternity gone gone wild. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very we'll see, much like the brink, if you remember that TV yeah. show. That we well, all I'm all, I, all I'm uh, saying is is that uh, he better turn one of these coins into a, a fake Nobel Prize to put around his neck because he the ain't getting one. The other coin was good looking with the plane and uh, and so forth. It was, it was oh yeah, it was a lovely coin, lovely yeah. coin. You know, it was my hat. And now, and on top of that, you know, let's look at who has fucked up this whole thing, right? Who gave John Bolton. Pence. Well, well, first of all, Bolton, but then Pence is the one now that they're yelling about because Pence made the statement that if uh, if Korea doesn't come to the peace table, Kim Jong Un may wind up like Muammar Gaddafi. Now they, you uh, just right. don't say that. You don't say that about a guy who wound up with a bayonet in his ass, lying in a drainage pipe. You want to hear my conspiracy theory? No. <laughs> no, but why, why? Why can't Why can't Trump control the people around him from fucking these things up? I, I, I think, think Pence did it on purpose. Because yeah. Pence wants to get the glory. He knows enough about the investigation to know Trump's days are numbered. His days are numbered. They're, within six months, he'll be gone. Bullshit. Pence wants to get credit for doing it. Because Pence is smart. I disagree. I disagree with you, Tim. I think that. I think that. I think. I think it doesn't matter what the polls are up. Yeah, he used to be a thirty-nine, and now up. he's a forty-two. Big fucking it's deal. Actually, uh, it's not fifty. But By who? Now who? Which the poll? Public's going to see this as a failure. Which, which poll? Uh, Rasmussen. My poll is really Rasmussen. Up. I could have told you it was Rasmussen because he fixes all those polls. Uh, the well, he was the only one that was right uh, when it came time to say that Trump was going to win. Well, uh, he was going to say that whether he was going to win or not. That's Rasmussen. You know, uh, I never believe a thing Rasmussen says. You know, give me a creditable point. I've got a question for the panel. Yeah. Which is in the best interest of Putin and Russia for North Korea to settle with South Korea or to keep things status quo? What do you guys think? Best interest think, for Russia? Hmm. I, I think it's to stay yeah. it the way it is. Uh, yeah. It's, that is they absolutely. don't want to unify Korea either, I don't think. So Putin could be playing behind the scenes, too. He's KGB, so he doesn't do things outwardly like Chi and Un. Chi and Un. We have Un and Chi running the world. That's crazy. Yeah. I think everybody's waiting to watch the U.S. implode. You, you know, know I, many, I many, many analysts, I, many analysts are saying we're headed for a big recession. Uh, towards the end of this year, and uh, I, I think that's probably the case. I think Putin's an e- expert chess player, with and the, he's just going to let us John, self dis- with the uh, with the uh, reduce re- reduction of Dodd Frank. Uh, I think it's going to open up a lot more credit. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But what and, did they and, do with and, his credit and, before? They ruined it all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but now they get the benefit of knowing that if now, they don't now it's it, now it's the wild west again. We're going to go right back to the uncontrolled yeah, that's right. financial you, you know, sector. It, I if think you think Phil, if you think that this economy exists for the little guy, the middle class, or even those making a couple of mil a year, you're deluded. This this economy exists only for one class of people. We've identified them as the one percent. And that's who benefits from Absolutely. anything and this country does now. Well, you know what else? The automobile loaning industry is doing exactly what the mortgage industry did before. There's going to be a flood of recalled or repossessed cars on the markets. 
they're ruining their used car and well and the new car industry both and uh, putin is just laughing all the way to the bank i uh, putin's got a long way to go before he gets to the uh-huh. bank well, I, what do you I mean? He's probably he is probably the richest man in the world, Phil. Putin himself is is very wealthy, but uh, that is what we're being told. But there he gets he gets too. fifty he gets fifty percent of everything the oligarchs make. Think about yeah. that one. I get he's 50% the godfather. Of he's the godfather. Yeah, get. he really is the godfather. Right. Right. And you, you know, when I grew up in the sixties. And all the scare of the communists taking over, that somehow the communists would get us from the inside out, and someday we'd be wearing their uniforms and singing their anthems. Mm-hmm. Man, it's taken a while, but I think we're getting close to that kind of crap. Yeah, well. I'm really scared well, now, but I was scared of the sing kids. our anthem. <laughs> you know, if you'd sing our anthem, we wouldn't have to worry about singing theirs. Oh, you I know, countries, I, I, con- yeah. countries self-destruct. Uh, we, you, you know, we have the Roman Empire. Uh, yeah, they they had uh, economic failures, uh, unpopular foreign wars. Rome was in every single fucking country in uh, Eastern and Northern Europe at the time, and they couldn't maintain their own armies. Uh, uh, they, they had uh, a VAT. They had basically Trump, had a VAT tax, right? The, Trump Rome self-destructed, and I but think not. that's where we're headed. Trump People don't have to do shit about America. We're gonna we're gonna ruin ourselves. And Trump, what Weinstein that, and all the Me Too like, stuff, you know, that's just part of the the, the uh, not corruption, but um, here we go. It's paranoia time. It's paranoia time. It's hey, paranoia time. Me. It's paranoia time. No, no, it's, no, it's not paranoia. It's a call. It's a call to arms. Aren't well, I think we can win it, but we got to wake up. No, we, but we need up. more guns. That's what we're going to have a call to arms. Yeah. Hey, uh, I heard Weinstein is getting uh, uh, the, seven a.m. Yeah, Eastern time. It tomorrow. Uh, Precinct that, number one. How appropriate. It really. Wait a minute. Seven o'clock in the morning. Are they even open that time of the day? Oh, they're open, all, they're open all night. Do you ever watch Night Court? Night Court? <laughs> no, I, I, are you sure it's that early in the day? They're prosecuting him for, for or they're arresting him for rape? Is, is that the, uh, the it, deal? Well, they don't say what. Gross sexual imposition, probably. Did you hear Morgan Freeman got accused today? Yeah. 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 Morgan Freeman, for God's sake. Mm. Hey, that power goes to your head. It can go to your both head. heads, <clears throat> and it can it can be exaggerated both sides, right, Alex? I I think uh, from what I read of Morgan Freeman's the accusations against him, they were so tame it was ridiculous. It was just that he it's like, it, it's it's, like he it's, told it's, it. Wait a minute, let me finish, Tim. It's like he told a couple of inappropriate jokes around some women, you know. Uh, at, at one point, he supposedly lifted a woman's dress. Uh, but we don't know the circumstances or, or what he felt he was accomplishing, maybe as a joke. So, I, you know, I, it, 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 enough is enough. <laughs> you know, we've, we've taken this Me Too movement to a point where it really means nothing anymore. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, why did Al Franken leave? That yeah, looks pretty yeah, silly yeah, now. Yeah, Patrick's got his hand up. You can't see anybody. I really, really wish you would get a camera or at least use Skype with the, uh, so you can see the camera. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes, Patrick. Um, you never even got their, their skirt up. It, yeah. yeah. That, that's the worst of it that I read is that he, um, he, you know, told some off color jokes and comments and attempted to uh, lift a skirt. And, uh, you know, I when I read that, I rolled my eyes because it just seems like now, it, it, what, what like you said many months ago, and you said it probably last week, there, there's nobody that is safe. It, you know? It's becoming kind of like the Salem witch trials. Yes, uh, Phil had his hand up. Or, yeah, so this is uh, this is Morgan Freeman, not Samuel L. Jackson that got. Uh, that's right, Phil. Get, I want you, you better get it straight, otherwise we'll all have to have get a drink. The right, black guy. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. No, I was uh, I was looking at a uh, quote today uh, that I thought was a good one, uh, but it's Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, you know, I will strike down thee with great vengeance. Well, that's from, that's anger. that's from. Hey, that, Renee, come that, on, stop. 
lurking in the that, background. That, no, that's here. from uh, on that, the TV here. Uh, wait a minute, that's yeah. from uh, that's from uh, what do you call Pulp it? Uh, P- Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Uh, but um, oh, it's only a matter of time before they get around to everybody. You know. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's turned into a Salem witch hunt, basically, uh, a, a, in which a person gets accused. Eight, eight women stand up and say he I, he was the devil. And uh, uh, then he never works again, and he never goes to court either. But he never gets to prove his It's innocence. mostly liberals that are eating their own. Uh, is Morgan Freeman's. A, we don't a, know. A, we don't know if he's a liberal. He and then, then you had uh, uh, Weinstein. He was a big time lefty. Well, uh, because most people in the entertainment industry are lefties. There's hardly uh, anybody on the right. No, they're not real lefties. They're fake lefties or whatever. But oh, I mean, yeah, no, they, nobody. The limousine lefties. Let's not degrade people. What, George Clooney is the, a lefty. George, yes, George an Clooney. Asshole. George Clooney is a lefty, and why is he an asshole? Why is he an asshole? Uh, because he was a, a rabid Hillary supporter. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Supporter. I'm sorry. But that doesn't make him an asshole. That doesn't make him an yeah, asshole. Yeah, sure it does. That's his political why? opinion and his political right. You know, and 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 I'll tell you something, John. You're in, yeah. involving yourself in just what Phil talked about. Of, of eating our own, you know, that, 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 you know, putting down Clooney makes you feel good and hip, but the fact of the matter is, no, it doesn't. He, is what, he, I, he is one of the people on our side who we can depend upon when we need him, and I, I, th- I think we should not eat our own. Well, uh, that's true, but uh, I, I think the Democratic Party is, is uh, just a fake uh, uh, wing of the uh, no, corporate I, but party. but I don't, I don't, the one I, I don't think party. it. I don't think it. We Clooney, had a good candidate. I, I don't we think Bernie. Well, I think the, Bernie. The okay, party let's let's let me say it. Destroy. Let me say it. You can get apoplectic after I'm through. <laughs> Bernie would have been a bad candidate. He would have a, lost. A terrible time. candidate. Bernie, and he would have been. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. And he would have even been. He would listen to me. He would have even been a worse president. I don't think so. He's not a bad senator. Uh, what's his? You know, what, what, what are his? Quali- like what are his Vermont? qualifications for running a country? I don't think he would have gotten uh, a lot of traction as a president. I don't think he would have gotten elected. I think that would have been the slam dunk for Trump. Yeah, we wouldn't have had Gorsuch yeah. as a Supreme no. But Court you're, you're no. First, you have to say that he becomes president, and he. If he got yeah. nominated, would not become president. Hell, Patrick's smiling. You love seeing we, the liberals go after each other, right? I got a boner right now, so yeah. <laughs> I told you they eat their own. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, and and we we did it in the beginning uh, two years ago when we it's had uh, twenty five Republicans running, and they were going after each other, mm-hmm. and I was laughing at that because. It's funny to watch people on the same side scream at each other, and I may have told this story because what's happening right now on this panel reminds me very much of it. I have two uncles, and this is when Gore was running for president. Mm -hmm. Both of my uncles supported Gore, all right? Supported Gore. They both liked Gore. They were in my parents' kitchen almost going to blows because they disagreed on, I don't even remember what it was, but it was a little thing that one didn't like and the other one did, and they were almost at fisticuffs in the fucking kitchen because, you know, it, well, you're wrong on that one, but they both like gore. So that's what this is. Everybody, you're all on the same fucking side. Figure it out. We had to, and we ended up with fucking Trump. So if that's yeah. what you want, Go for it. Ray? Well, Patrick, uh, it was really only Alex arguing with John. The rest of us were sort of just listening. You know, I, I'm, I'm saying as a whole. Okay. Because I wasn't part of eating my own on the Republican side. But it, it just, it, it's funny to me watching that. The, the same thing is going to happen on the Democratic side, not only in the uh, in the two, 2020 election, because there's a lot of people that want that position, and they're going to be doing the same thing that the Republicans did to each other uh, in 16, as well as 
uh, th their main point of running is to uh, that they don't like Trump, and uh, it, things are that that argument is not holding water anymore. Yes, Ray. Well, this, I, you're you're right, Phil. I, I agree. I, that could very well happen, and I think that's exactly what happened with the Republicans, and they ended up with a non-Republican as president of the United States. Yeah. I mean, he went from, wasn't he a Democrat? He was a Democrat, yes. And then he went independent, and then he realized he could not win as an independent, so he went Republican while he watched he, at the one other point, Republicans at one, destroy York, themselves. New, at New one, York Republicans at one are point, all liberal at one, Democrats. At one point, I believe nope. Trump went after the liberal nomination for president. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the, uh, uh, the liber another libertarian, another excuse me, the libertarian. In another, in an, yeah. Other he, all he wanted to do was get in, and he saw he saw the Republicans eating their own, and so he stepped in, and took over, and that's what happened. Well, I, you know, there's just in my view, there's only one party, and that's the party of the one percent. I think we're we're deluding ourselves to think that there's any real fucking difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. When you guys accuse me of being a liberal fighting my own, I'm not fighting my own. I'm fighting for the. No, we said you were eating your own. You know, this is a class war. This is hey, not Democrat yeah. and, and Republican. We're in a fucking class war. And, it, and, mm -hmm. and to think that presidential politics, that's why I said Bernie, you know, it would be great to have him in, in, in the office because at least he's not going to do a lot of damage with these hideous appointments. Um, imagine a, a yeah, but he, he might let, bump. A, a, he he might, yeah, he might not do a lot of damage, but he might bump into a lot of furniture. Uh, yes, Patrick, did you have your hand up? Or, or was it Tim? Tim had something no, you wanted to say. Tim, just, yeah. just two points. Uh, I think what we're talking really about is a, a systemic problem. The fact that there's just too easy to have too much money in politics. Yeah. Which makes them both yeah. corporate parties. And, and yeah. I'll say one thing about Hillary. She was good when she was running against Obama because she gave him a pretty good fight and prepared him for the general election. So I think she helped Obama get elected too. And mm -hmm. I, 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 I wake up every morning just wonder what it'd be like. I, 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 things I don't like about Hillary, but how much nicer the, our country would be if Hillary was there. No, oh, oh. bull. Of course, yeah, it would be uh, you know. Yeah, bull. A, a crooked. Who who who, uh, who said? Uh, oh. She's a hawk. She's a hawk or a hawk too. Well, you know, I mean, I just I just don't think. Bernie could have won. Yes, Patrick. Well, and then I, Jeff. And then Jeff. I remember during the, I think it was the 08 election when you were on Sirius discussing it. And one of the things that I found interesting with Hillary, and I thought she had a real chance, and I would not have been afraid of her as a president, is she is somewhat hawkish. Mm -hmm. and would at least defend this country versus uh, being a peacenik. Mm -hmm. And I found that attractive about her in 2008. And uh, she seemed to have lost that fire this last time around. And, and that's why uh, Democrats in my family uh, ended up going independent because they didn't feel that she would do enough to protect our country. Um, and they certainly didn't feel uh, Bernie with anything. So everybody, I well, mean, my well, family well, remember, scattered remember, between all of yeah. the Indian. Something we seem to be forgetting here, and that is Hillary did win the popular vote. And I think where the problem lay was they, they thought, well, we got the popular vote. Uh, we'll probably win the election. And the fact is they didn't have a good enough ground game, and they didn't play the ground game. And that's why, how Trump won. Trump the, lost by three million votes. That's not from two states, basically. No, but still three million votes, Phil. That's a, yeah, that's not but, insignificant. And the bottom line is, Trump says that these people weren't legal voters. Oh, oh yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're and, gonna, you're gonna uh, believe that fucking lie? You know on, what is amazing to me Phil, is you you, know it. you swallow so many lies oh by Trump. You may as well swallow his dick. Too. But bottom line is, he's the president, and you're not. 
Yeah, but why believe? Why just believe that bullshit that he says? Why just why? why I mean, you could support because him, I, but why believe? The way, just, yeah, now the we're way, finding out there wasn't a spy inside actually, his party. It's proven that that that's bullshit. There, there was a, there's some professor that did all the math. I read the whole article. It's like, it, it, there's no way that they were illegal. It's, it's impossible. The way that they were registering yeah. people in California. Uh, uh, at the at the DMV, anybody you walked up, you said, "Hey, I'm Vinny Bombet." You and have to <laughs> anywhere, any uh, anywhere I've ever been, and that includes California, where I've had to vote. I had to bring my birth certificate with me. I didn't. You I, didn't. I how many here had to bring their birth certificate to prove how old they were when they I, I registered when they registered so to vote? I yeah, remember. because you registered to vote. Hoover was running. But, uh, uh. <laughs> hey, hey, Phil, can I ask you a quick question? Phil? I believe it. Yeah. You know, back then, you, you didn't have all these liberals saying, oh, you can't ask a guy for ID. That's, but, that's bigoted. But, Phil, I mean, I'm all, I can understand why you support Trump. That's fine. But why, why believe his bullshit? You really lies? can They're understand. Just lies. Why, why believe that shit? They're taking you, you can support him and not believe these. What, there's, there's one lie. I, there's a new lie you, we can talk about is Spygate, because Trump offered to become and maybe was a, a confidential informant during the casino scandals. He knows good and well this is, was not a, an implant. It was not somebody embedded. It was not a spy. It was this really contacts with a, a, a confidential informant, which happens every day. I, I believe the grounds for the Pfizer warrants were were deceitful. I believe that no, the, they weren't. They didn't use the dossier. Oh, the dossier it, where nothing has been proven wrong yet. Or by Hillary and the DNC. Yeah, but they didn't use it. They used the Papadopoulos. The, used that, other on the ground uh, intel. That's what they used for the warrant, Tim. They not all of them. But the the main investigation that was started was from other intel, and they did. They didn't just. They knew about it, but that wasn't the primary the source. Pfizer warrant on age. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I was listening to... Uh, but uh, nothing uh, in the dossier has been proven wrong. Well, of course it's it been... It wasn't the Democrats who put together. It was a, a British spy who was well-respected worldwide. Okay, there are two people that haven't had a chance to talk tonight. Uh, Jeff, you had something you wanted to say, and we haven't heard well, from I Kevin. Was, I was going to support for uh, <laughs> president... But she was very difficult to work with, uh, from my perspective. Yeah. And I ended up voting for her. Uh, I, mean, I, I held my nose when I voted for her. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah. I really did. And I, I'm curious as to what, you know, what kind of president she really would have been. Yes, she is more hawk-ish, so to speak, and that was probably... A good perspective. I think she her. would have been a shitty president, but I think that Bernie Sanders would have been even a more shitty president because at least she knew where the bathrooms were in the White House, you know? Yeah. She had been there hey, before. Uh, Alex, uh, Trump's main pollster, Tony for Brazil, this is from a respected uh, journal, The Hill, stated flatly at a recent Harvard University Institute of Politics that Sanders would have beaten Trump. Well, that so you can you can you can you, you you, you, you can say that, and you can blow smoke out your ass. It doesn't mean anything because you, you he didn't win. He didn't even get the nomination. He couldn't get the nomination. How come? How, well, how do you expect him to win the election? Uh, he was cheated out of the no nomination uh, by uh, the DNC. Uh, uh, well, now you're. Sound I've always heard that. How was that? Why, yeah, now you're now the, you're sounding uh, like the, delegates, the super delegates. Yeah, the super delegates. Right? Wait, wait a minute! Don't the Republicans have the super delegates? Isn't no. that their thing? No, oh, but they want them. <laughs> yeah. No, look, I mean, I don't think he had an even shot at it, but I still think that uh, you know he, they put him down five hundred delegates just just off the bat with the super delegates. Well, this is called politics, and you play politics as they're written. If you don't like politics the way they are, you change them. But in the meantime, in the meantime, no, it wasn't dirty. They were playing. The the game was, were the rules, rules were set, and they played by the rules, and oh, they, mean, and, and they you won. You mean like the Electoral College and the fact that Trump won? 
I didn't. The I didn't say that he. he rules? Obviously, I, I, tr I, Trump I, won the I election. Who's going to win the next election right now? Trump. Sheldon Adelson and the Koch brothers. <laughs> the one percent is going to win the next election. That's yeah, sure. absolutely. Whether, yeah. Regardless of the party. well, listen, the one percent has been winning the elections for the last. Yeah, how many presidents we got? Forty-five. <laughs> yeah, and the next time you ch check the uh, circumference of your asshole, it's uh, that big because that's where we've been getting screwed by the one percent. Even Perot, who ran as a third party, was part of the one percent. I yeah. asked the one percenters were motorcycle gangs. <laughs> I just wanted to. Can I contribute something? Just on the yes. weekends, Phil. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Right. Yeah. Um, so in the 18th century, doctors used used to actually blow smoke up people's asses. They also used leeches. To, uh, <laughs> Where's Brian? Hey, Brian, this is one for you, man. Where the heck you're lurking it, out there with uh, Renee? Come on, you guys. You got like a half an they, hour. They blew left. tobacco up. Sunny. They they blew tobacco up people's asses. They thought it healed all kinds of things. I had friends that used to light farts. Could be the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a similar thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's yeah, it's a derivative of that. I have never lit yeah. my farts, and I have some good farts too. Uh, oh, it's fun. I have, no, try I have, it. I have, I have, really? Yeah, it, it, it's incredible. You, and you don't even have to take your pants off. It's better if you don't, because then you need to burn your ass hairs off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, even the volcano right? is farting now. Kevin, yeah. Kevin, how are you this evening, my friend? <laughs> out and they're talking about trump and then they come back in and you're lighting farts yeah that, that's what i like <laughs> I, I about this program. i had to change the subject I was going, nothing I was better than a little change. blue flame from methane gas yes that's right that's right <laughs> yeah the volcano has blue flame blue flames coming out now too yeah it, because yeah. it's burning the methane, the methane in the earth yeah 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 when it hit the geothermal plant? well i gotta they tell you i gotta tell you that that earthquake is Horrendous! It's it's terrible for the people who live near there, but man, that's beautiful. Did you yeah, see? It's the, just, uh, it's uh, just things, it's, things opening up, swallowing houses in the. Uh, it is it is the awesome power of the, of of nature. And yeah. It, so, it, did you hear about the guy uh, over here in Santa Cruz? Okay, the the Parr family. They they, you know, God love them for. You know, wanting to start a new life and the whole bit. Oh, yeah, they, they went over there. Yes. They went over there and they they bought this macadamia farm and they they settled down. They, they went over there and asked 100 people, you know, you know, uh, you know, they checked out the place. and No, nothing's ever happened here. And they checked everything out. And, no, there's never been a problem here for 100 years, blah, blah, blah. And they went out there and they bought this farm and they sold everything and decided they were going to start this macadamia farm and retire and went out for a walk and the goddamn thing blew up on them and swallowed think, their house. I think within two weeks of them two moving weeks, in. Two weeks and the thing has buried their house and their whole macadamia nut farm. And now they're back in Santa Cruz with nothing. Wow. Is, there's my, no insurance. My wife's uncle was farming near Mount St. Helen when it blew. Couldn't even find his house because of the dust. Ended up yeah. eventually with lung cancer, lost his entire farm, moved back to Ohio, and he and his mom, his wife, part of it was stress, but part of it was just dealing with the ash, just tremendous tons of ash. Well, they had they had uh, they had home insurance, but they also had a lava insurance, which, believe it or not, you can get, but it didn't kick in for six months. Yeah, like moving to Florida, into the Keys or somewhere. It takes a long time to be able to get the hurricane insurance. Yeah, but that's that sucks. You go out for a walk and think you'll get struck by lightning, and you never do, but you do. Did you, hear, did you see the guy that got hit by a lava bomb? Yeah, yeah. lost hit his, his leg. leg or something. Yeah. What? Did that come through his roof? He was yeah, no. He it was, hit him on the leg. On he was standing on. His leg. He was standing on a third floor patio. Yeah. When he got hit, got burned up pretty bad. It can happen instantly. But it, it's ugly, but it sure is pretty. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I've only been to New York City twice, maybe three times, for a week or so. Mm -hmm. And each time it seems like I see a, a taxi cab lodged into a storefront window. 
How often does that happen? Well, that's our fake car that we put in so it looks like it's actually... Oh, okay. It was probably a movie set. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, for, it's hard it's, to find parking in New York. Actually, there was somebody who did that as an art piece, uh, uh, in I can't remember where, and they showed it. They took an old car, they cut it in half, and then they put a fake front. Did you see that picture, Jeff? A, a fake no, no, I haven't. But I like there it. was a, a break in the in the glass, and it's black, and it looked like the car was cra had crashed into the window. Yes, uh, Patrick. High school did that here in Wisconsin uh, for a senior prank. They, uh, they were part of the auto shop or whatever and took one of the cars and then they got some brick that matched. That was it. That was the picture I saw. And and it, it yeah, they made it look like it, a car had gone through and, and um, they actually got like a commendation from the mayor and some other stuff because they were so creative. So. Yes, they, uh, yes take Kevin. <laughs> okay, let me derail this on guns here because I, I uh, saw this on Sunday and I, and I haven't been able to call in all week. But And Phil will probably jump on me on, on the bandwagon for me on this and the Second Amendment and stuff. But, um, you know, we've all talked about the, the thing on Friday. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been on all week. But I don't know if you guys saw this, this article on, on Sunday where uh, the guy up in North Carolina that uh, went off the deep end. Mm -hmm. And basically what this guy did was uh, him and his daughter and daughter-in-law, basically his family, went into a lodge in North Carolina, mm -hmm. sat him down for dinner, and apparently this guy has been going off the deep end and sat him down for dinner and basically went out to his car, got in his car, and turned around, drove through the front of the store, and killed him. Yeah. Mm. And apparently, this guy has been going into deep, had been in deep depression. He was a, a an investigator, and I'm not sure if he was a cop before, but his daughter was a cop. Mm -hmm. And he had guns, and he had his guns. He gave away his guns apparently because he felt that he was uh, going off the deep end. Mm -hmm. But it kind of brings up the whole, uh, you know, Second Amendment thing where, you know, we're treating, trying to catch these people before they go wacko. And it made started making me think about the whole the whole gun thing and getting a hold of people before they grab their guns and start shooting people. Well, this guy had his guns taken away and he used a car as a weapon to kill people. That's yeah. common, you know, and, and that's, you know, that's something Phil's brought up several times. And, I, you know, I didn't I'm not trying to jump on Phil's bandwagon, but that's exactly what happened. But that's anecdotal. I mean, there's always going to be people who use other things than guns to kill people. And, and that's that's my point. It didn't yeah. have anything to do with the Second Amendment or, you know, owning the guns or anything. But it, that's it, that's why I say it's such a hard thing to to go after. But there was another shooting today, you know, in Oklahoma. Wasn't it stopped by a citizen with yeah. a gun? gun? Uh, yeah, but I yeah. think he shot a couple people. Yeah, uh, but, uh, um, uh, Jeff. Yeah, one of uh, the fellows who lives uh, close to, to us um, finds out that his grandfather was the guy who invented the switchblade. And I, I don't know how much of you guys remember, in the 50s, switchblades became illegal. Yeah, yeah, I thought they were from Italy. So, oh, stiletto. No. Stiletto. Was, no, it was yeah. designed Everybody have a drink, Phil. It was wrong Can again. I... Yeah. <laughs> no, I, the stiletto was it was Italian. That's, yeah. Anyway, I got to use one, and they're pretty neat. Um, but you you still can't buy them in the United States. But I'm, I'm trying anybody who's going to Europe to pick one up for me. I'd like to... Yeah. Just fun of it. Okay. Um, Isn't there a length limit or something on them or something? They have to be less than six inches or some shit? I don't remember. Yeah. Um, let's see. Automatic. Six, six inches? That's like most men. <laughs> I have a switch comb. I have no problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, let's see here. What, what else was uh, what else was there in the news? Um, 
uh, there, there, you know, you were talking about McDonald's, um, uh, and you say there's a what? A, how big a suit is that? Five million uh, dollar uh, class action. By the way, suit. there was a woman. And I'm trying to remember what state it was. It might have been Georgia, who just got awarded a million dollars because she got raped. And yeah, she sued, no, was it a million or a billion? A billion, excuse me, a billion. Yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, wrong again, huh? Uh, Take a drink. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm sorry. It's a little late, and I'm getting old. All right, uh, it was a billion dollar uh, judgment against the company that this guy worked for. Uh, and is the largest settlement in American history. Now, whether she'll ever get the billion, I don't know. But uh, good for her. You yeah. Know? Uh, the thing that uh, you guys mentioned earlier, armed citizen shoots and kills suspect who is accused of shooting others in restaurant, and that's today in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess uh, that's the time when a good guy with a gun Stopped a, well, and thwarted a. He does, uh, however, uh, for it does momentarily also become a bad guy because he killed somebody in the process. And yeah, didn't the other guy kill was killing people? everybody else? Well, no, but but did he know that other people were being killed? Yes, that's why he shot him. <laughs> yeah, and so that justifies everybody having a gun. It, it because you you want to suppress any positive news yes I do on good guys I, I, no I want no I don't want the only thing I want to suppress is being anybody being able to buy a gun in this fucking country right so you don't want any positive news when somebody actually thwarts uh, that hey, kind of hey hey you know and a, cl a stop clock is right twice a day and uh, <laughs> we, and people go what are the chances of that happening? Well, apparently they're 100 percent. There are exceptions to everything, Phil. And if you go looking long enough on the Internet, you'll find something to make your point. Well, there was a guy in a restaurant who was armed. What are you? you oh, is that is that your comb? It's a it's, a, it's my switch. It's a comb. It's a, it's a, <laughs> Which blade comb? Oh, I remember those. I was looking for my knife. I, I've got one of those knives that's not a switch blade, but when you you can press something and and pop it open. Let's do that again. They had those in the sixties. That. That's called your penis, Phil. Uh, anyway, what? That's yeah, pretty awesome. That's pretty cute. It's something that you touch and it pops open. Now, what is that? And if somebody, if people aren't, if they're just listening to this, you're missing all the wonderful. What okay, is that? Okay, this is my back scratcher. It's a switchblade back scratcher. See, it collapses <laughs> like this and then it comes out. Oh, I like got that. one of those too. I have to go get it. <laughs> You've got all the good stuff, Ray. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. collect all kinds of weird. You know, there yeah. there are just regular combs you can use. That's boring. <laughs> uh, there are regular back scratchers you can get. You can get uh, hey, uh, uh, didn't it, all of you used to have the gun <laughs> that you pulled the trigger and it became a cigarette lighter? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm Alex wondering. has got comb envy. <laughs> you know, we were talking the other night, I think, about the fact that when I was a kid, I, I had a gun and holster set, you know, yeah. with the caps. Cap. You love the smell of caps when they when they burn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think, I, I don't know, I, I would like to go to some toy store and see if they still sell toy guns. I don't think they do any longer. And if I they do, they, they do. They, but they have an orange tip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. airsoft. Yeah. Oh, like, the airsoft look real. Yeah. 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 But then uh, I started to wonder, do they still have water guns? I know we have the big super soakers, but do we have just water guns anymore? Yeah, we do. I, I bought one for my dog. You know, when he's bad. <laughs> when they bark. <laughs> yeah. oh, I thought he liked to play with it. Yeah. No, they, they do sell water guns, but they, they're looking more like, uh, you know, Klingon uh, phasers or something, not, you know, real guns. Well, yeah. I, I do know they have the super soakers. Yeah, and those <laughs> things like gush big time. Uh, but uh, anyway, so let's see here. We got uh, we got uh, 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 what's his name, uh, uh, the uh, movie producer uh, uh, Weinstein. We we Weinstein tomorrow going to give himself up. I think he's turning himself in. They asked him to turn himself in. We don't know exactly what the charges are though yet. It was rape. No, it, I don't know that it was rape. They they described it. They described it in some other fashion. Oh, 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 oh here we go. 
Sorry, I need to distract. Are you taking up dog grooming as a part-time job since the acting isn't working out yeah, for you? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get money somehow. So I'm training myself to groom dogs. That dog really has a Disney dog face. It does. I know. Look at that. Yeah. Yep. Isn't that cute? Look at that yes. dog. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you lick his tongue last night, Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> the dog doesn't even want to kiss you. The dog has a look on his face like, what the fuck are you doing with me? She's got dog porn right going on. Huh? She's, she's camera shy. This Phil person. needs to talk. Uh, yes, uh, Phil has his hand up. He's learned now that if he puts his paw up, I'll, I'll, I'll recognize him. Go ahead, Phil. All right. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein will be charged with rape and a criminal sex act in New York. Ooh, wow. Uh, oh, okay. So that's, that's the charge. Well, that's a big one. He's raping, raping one woman and forcing another to perform oral sex on him. Wow. Well, so you know, those are charges. Yeah, and yeah. I would. I, any woman who says Harvey Weinstein forced himself on me, I would have a tendency to believe because I can't think of any other reason why a woman would fuck <laughs> Harvey Weinstein unless he did force them. He is pretty. I mean, I, could I you lost see? My could you see? For a minute, is Clinton on the news again? What? <laughs> I lost what? my sound for a few minutes. You, you mean Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton. Sounds like you're talking a lot about Bill Clinton. No, yeah. no. Weinstein. Weinstein. Okay, oh, you're okay. joking. Yeah. Well, I, my, I my, lost, no, my I lost, no, I lost my sound. My uh, Wi-Fi got real slow. My question oh. is, in this day and age, if the Clinton situation happened now, how would he have survived that incident? I mean, would he have been chased from office because of it? He didn't get chased from office. He was impeached. No, no, no. For lying. No, but I'm saying, he. yes, he got impeached, but he didn't get found guilty, so therefore it was just an impeachment, which is just simply, Phil, in case you're not aware of it, an indictment. Right. Okay? He wouldn't, but, have, got, he wouldn't have won the second election. But I don't know that, yeah, he, he wouldn't have won the, he, well, he wouldn't, I, the incident itself, see, I... I actually think Monica Lewinsky in that case was the pursuer. But still, in this whole Me Too atmosphere, he would have never survived it. Yes, Patrick? I think he would have been like an Al Franken. Uh, and you're right, he wouldn't have survived. The, he, he would have never had a second term. I don't think he would have been thrown out of office. He would have been impeached. Um, I highly doubt he would have been you know, removed from office, but... Definitely, either he would have resigned, been forced to resign, much like uh, uh, what did face in Minnesota, mm -hmm. or he would have just never, he would have announced that he's not running again, and that would have been the end of it. Right. Uh, I, I think that he, um, uh, it, it would have been, it would have been a difficult go in this day and age, but. Uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen with Weinstein. All I know is if he has enough money left, and I'm sure he does, uh, he could probably squeeze, uh, get out of this. I think he could survive it. I mean, he's not going to survive it professionally, but I think he could keep out of jail. I mean, he's going to uh, he's going to put up a million dollars in cash and wear a monitoring device. Why do you have to wear a monitoring device if you've only been accused of something? Uh, because uh, they don't want him to. Uh, uh, to he's a flight risk. So he yeah. doesn't have to get, stay in jail. Yeah. How easy is it to get those uh, those leg things off? Never tried. Well, I'm, I'm, the Sopranos. Line on. I, I'm just wondering if you can do that and then you just leave it at home and leave the country they showed how to do that on an episode of ray donovan oh really yeah i think Kamiki uh donovan had had one on and he uh had a uh break it off somehow so that he could go to las vegas and you know get laid or you might something have to, you might have to break one uh, bone in your foot or two <laughs> yeah. if you just amputate your leg well, you know. I know I had to. Uh, I, I had to. I, I had to get somebody out of handcuffs once. That's easy. He had. Uh, what happened was, is the cops arrested him for pot or something like that, and he was in the back seat of the police car. And all of a sudden, they stopped because there was something else happening, and they ran. Both of them ran out, and the door was open, so he just took off. 
You can stick a paper clip down the uh, edge of a set of handcuffs. Well, we didn't know that because we were just using a hacksaw for hours just paper trying to get through it. Move the teeth, and then you can free it up so you can just well, open it Well, if I'm up. ever in handcuffs, I will call you, Phil, and you can give me the recipe for doing it. I actually have a handcuff key. <laughs> well, aren't all handcuff keys the same? Yeah, but I have a fancy one. No, but aren't they all the same, basically? Yeah. It, 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 hey, Phil, you just gave away your pickup line. I have a <laughs> handcuff key. Aren't the aren't the flex <laughs> those those plastic cuffs better? Oh, flex that, cuffs. Yeah, aren't they better really than a, than a handcuff? I you, don't think so. I think they they can get out of those pretty easy. Yeah, there, there's a lot. Of, uh, Alex, Google how to break them. Uh, there's tons of videos on how to yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. We Why don't they just Chinese use Chinese finger? finger? finger. Yeah, yeah the Chinese, Chinese finger, finger trap. Yeah, you're finger under arrest. Trap. Okay, those are ESG. those were great. What what were you saying, Tim? I we thought that at the same time. That was weird. Yeah, that is weird. China's on our mind right now. China's a big, yeah. big thing. Do they use those in China? I was wonder, I'm wondering. Do they actually? Is that what they use in China when they arrest people? It's water torture, but we call it waterboarding. You know. Uh, but do they use the, the the finger the Chinese finger cuffs first? I don't think so. I have no idea. Uh, not in the last few centuries. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, uh, uh, Forbin <laughs> Colossus writes Gwyneth Paltrow was on Howard Stern yesterday, saying for the first time that her boyfriend Brad Pitt uh, threatened to kill Weinstein for trying uh, for uh, trying to bang her. Uh, Forbin, that story is like 24 hours old, okay? <laughs> and is there some? And you're the only person left listening to Howard Stern. Anyway, um, where were yeah. we? So I'll uh, take Bennett, I'll cuts, take Bennett over cuts. Stern any day. Well, I, I well, I mean, you know, with me, you get the real thing. Anyway, <laughs> not the. Uh, uh, I tried to listen to him the other day. I couldn't stand more than about a minute. Yeah. He's, 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 nothing's he's changed. Nothing's yeah. changed. Yeah. He's a good photographer. Who gives a shit? Yeah. 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 He's Who, gotten he, a number of covers, and his wife is a is a good model. Who gives yeah. a shit? He bought her. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so, uh, uh, you know, I... Uh, who knows what's going to be in the news tomorrow? But all I'm saying is, I looked at my my breaking news. In fact, I just already or news break, and um, I looked at the news for tomorrow. And I'm trying to avoid major Trump stories, but it's still pretty difficult to do. I'm I'm looking to see what I've got so far here. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Morgan Freeman. I, I, I think I pretty much don't have any oh there we go trump comes in about fourth uh so uh, tomorrow i'm going to try and get away with not doing too much trump told you try the no trump zone no, i don't I want the no trump, trump zone I, 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 not in a discussion that limits i don't want to ever limit the what we discuss here so when uh, is your breaking news a discussion no it's a it's a it's uh, called news break it's not called breaking news yeah it's so. new. Hey, the Warriors lost again tonight. Oh, oh. shit. Oh, yeah. Come. Yeah. So it's, it's basketball season, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've run out of stuff to talk about. I can't remember. Is there anything else that I we missed today? Uh, ha ha Harley Davidson is yeah. laying off hundreds of people because of Trump's tax cut. Thanks, thanks Trump. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they're going to go to like a, some. Well, how does yeah. the how does the tax cut cause that? Uh, uh, it's on it NBC uh, Nightly News uh, with Leslie Holt. There's a, a discussion on it. I I don't want to get into it now because I'd have to uh, you know. But I, you, you you could well, Google. Well, you want me to tag I, you? I, on I'm, this? I'm no no. You don't have to. Yeah. I know work. that Kevin and I both own Harley's. And uh, the, the Harley company, it used to be that they limited their production. It was like De Beers. You know, they, they held yeah. off uh, diamonds. And with Harley, they manufactured uh, a certain amount. And you could buy a used one. If it would cost more than a new one because there might have been a six-month wait to buy a Harley 20 years ago. 
Then they got the grand, the grand idea that they were going to make all the Harleys in the world. And now they're as uh, common as hen's teeth. So uh, the prices have gone down. People aren't buying them. And the demographic that buys Harleys, guys like Kevin and myself, are, uh, are getting too stuck old. With them. Yeah. Stuck yeah. with them. They're stuck with them. They, they're not worth anything. And uh, they, they, our group is getting too old. You know, we're, we're not buying new ones anymore. And yeah. we were the ones that bought them. It's about they, about since the anniversary is when they started yeah. watering everything down. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, it's going to be interesting in August here in Milwaukee. And it's the 115th anniversary. And every five years, they call it a coming home to Milwaukee. And, you know, when you're on the freeway... The last several years, you can see everybody getting grayer and grayer, and it's going to be interesting to see if the herd they're sending out, because, yeah, the demographics aren't there. Buell was a bike that was produced by Harley-Davidson that was like a trot rocket, and those went out of production about 10 years ago, I think, um, right around the 105th anniversary. And then that Porsche design one, uh, it was a good-looking bike, but it, it really never but caught is there, is there any, uh, 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 Kevin, is there any bike that's, like, considered better than the Harley? I mean, more, uh, people want it more than the Harley? The Victory. Well, yeah, but everybody wants the Harley, but there are, there are a dime a dozen now. What, what about, about the, the Indian? Indian, Indian started Indian. making I was say the Indian. There's a problem yeah. with Indians. They, they keep going out of business. You, you have a difficulty getting parts. Uh, By the way, the first, the first bicycle I ever owned, bicycle, was an Indian. Yeah. They made, uh, they made the thin they're wheel nice bikes. bikes. Yeah. They're nice bikes and everything, but they're, they're, yeah. they're not as desired. You know, there's a group of people that like them. By the and, way, uh, you don't know it, but Patrick has a Harley wheelchair. Uh, P Patrick, yeah. Patrick. The, the thing is with the with the Indian is that you look at the design; they're very similar to the Harleys, yeah. and a lot of the Hondas are the same way. And the thing is, that body style, like the electric light and that sort of thing, is appealing to an older group, and that includes my age in their forties. But everybody younger. They, they either are not interested in motorcycles at all, or they just want to cross rocket. Well, what, what made it uh, popular was Malcolm Forbes uh, uh, used to ride a Harley. And he made it cool for uh, people of uh, our generation uh, to own them who weren't one percenters. And, uh, hey, L. Ron Hubbard used to ride a Harley, too. Yeah. Well, no. uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I got another story for you. He Alex. did everything. Oh, L. Ron Hubbard did everything. Wait a minute. Uh, Ray's got his hand up first, uh, Tim. Do you know where Jamestown is up near Sonora? Yep. You guys, I was just up there this weekend, and uh, there's, there are always a zillion Harley people up there. And like you say, they were all in their 60s or 70s. Right. Uh, gray hair. <laughs> they all got off their bikes. They all limped. <laughs> they all had, they all had girlfriends in their fifties. Yeah, that looked like they'd been rode hard and put up wet. Yeah, yep. and uh, yeah, it's like, oh man, this is a dying customer base. That's for damn sure. And I looked around, and there was no, there were no young people in Harley's. Not one. So not you ask one. Why, you ask why they're laying people off? That's why. Yeah, they all go into the bars and have iced tea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No cigarettes anymore. Arnold Palmer. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, Arnold yeah, what? Uh, there's a joke somewhere there about leather jackets, but I can't figure it out right now. Yeah, you can't tell whether they have them on or not. It's not. It's not leather anymore. It's brush suede. I don't know. Whatever. It's it's a it's, well, a, it's a leisure jacket. I, there's got to be a joke there somewhere, well, it's but I can't. The, old, the older women wear the leather, and they're all fat now and stuff, and they still think they look good. And it's just disgusting. They were the, the worst thing ever is to go to the uh, street fair in San Francisco. What is that? The uh, Oh, uh, the Polk, uh, not the Polk, uh, but the Castro. Folsom. Ca Folsom Street. Folsom Street, Street Fair. Fair. Yeah, the and, July, and, and, see and see a big fat guy in assless chaps. I think that oh, that's that. maybe the most. Uh, just come to Hollister on the 4th yeah. of July. You'll see what you want. Anyway. Or what you don't want. Listen, <laughs> yeah. that's our theme playing. I want to thank everybody for joining. What happened to.
Is no Jeff? Feet. Is Jeff? Is Jeff okay? Jeff fell asleep. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Jeff, and uh, thanks, Patrick, and thanks, Tim, and thanks, Kevin, and thanks, Phil, and thanks, Ray, Ray Renati, and thank you very much, John Perulis. Uh, uh, why don't you give every, except for Phil, I mean, Jeff, uh, everybody give a big wave, wave goodbye uh, to our audience so that they can see your bright, shiny faces. Hopefully, we'll see you back here again tomorrow night, guys. And I hope Renee will call, and then I can say gals, too, and bye-bye to the doggy. Yeah, all right. That's our citizens panel for tonight, uh, uh, and, and a good one it was. Uh, I was running out of stuff to talk about, though. I don't know what, what was happening there. I guess it just, you know, it, a lot of times it's the same old damn old thing. Anyway, uh, I'm Alex Bennett. We'll be back again tomorrow night uh, right after uh, Damien. Uh, Chaplin and the Exchange at 9.30. We'll be here at 10, same time. Same station in life. Stay tuned for the intersection next. Jack and Amy followed by Connections at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And as I always like to say, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.